In the last video, we created this color picker with a JavaScript for loop. We did this by creating a table row or a TR tag and a table cell or a TD tag for each of our hexadecimal numbers in the array. And each of these TD tags has an inline background style of the hexadecimal colors in the array. So let's go take a look at this in the JavaScript code. Okay, so here's the line that we created. Let's get rid of this because we want to create a full 16 column table. And we are going to use modular division and some conditional logic inside of the for loop to determine when we want to begin a row and when we want to end a row or when we want to place this table cell in the middle of the row. So let's talk about modular division. Now it is sometimes called the modulo operation and according to Wikipedia, computing the modulo operation finds the remainder after the division of one number by another number. So for example, let's console.log say 4 mod 2. The modular operation is the percent sign. So let's console.log 4 mod 2. And then let's add or concatenate a string, which is a space. And then again, 5 mod 2. So we're going to compare the difference between 4 mod 2 and 5 mod 2. Okay, so as long as we didn't make any errors, we should get something. Let's save it and go to the cons. Oh, we got an error. Missing something. What could go wrong? Right here. You see where that is? We forgot the plus sign so we got to add to the string which is a space a plus sign and then let's see what we get okay okay so on our console we got zero and one so let's go back to the code and so we do know that four divided by two is two with a remainder of zero five divided by two is two with a remainder of one but 4 mod 2 is 0 and 5 mod 2 is 1. So let's use that in our logic. Right now, for demonstration purposes, let's make a 4 column table with the numbers in our array. So what we need is a beginning TR tag whenever the index i equals 0 or 4 or any number equally divisible by 4. This will begin a row. But any number i is equally divisible by 4 if that number divided by 4 has a remainder of 0. In other words, if that number mod 4 equals 0. So, inside the for loop, let's create a conditional statement. Let's type, if i mod 4 equals 0, then... Inside of the curly braces, we get the color picker and add to it with a plus equals. Now let's type double quotes and a semicolon. We are going to use double quotes because we are going to use single quotes inside of this string for the inline background style. Inside these double quotes, we are going to put what we want to be in the string whenever the index i mod 4 equals 0. Now this is where we need to be very careful with our strings. So let's type the whole string out and then later replace what we need with our variables. So let's type an opening tr tag with an opening td tag Okay, this TD tag needs a style. This is where we're going to hard code everything. Let's put the single quotes because the single quotes are going to be part of the style. So let's get the background and set it equal to, we're going to use a placeholder, pound sign F00. We're going to change this in a minute. We need to have our closing TD tag, but we do not want to have a closing TR tag. This begins a row. So now we need to replace this color, the pound sign F00, with two double quotes and inside those double quotes, two plus signs. 
This breaks up the string around the double quotes and allows us to concatenate the variable color. So we begin a table row if i equals 0 or 4 or 8 and so on. But we will also need to end the row if i equals 3 or 7 or 11 and so on. So we need to type else if i plus 1 mod 4 equals 0. Now, if it's not clear why we use i plus 1, let me explain. Okay, if we want a four column table, then we want a closing tr tag for the fourth row, which is when i equals 3, because arrays are zero indexed. We also want a closing tr tag when i, when at the eighth row, and the twelfth row, and so on. But because they're zero indexed, the eighth row, i is 7, and the 12th row, i is 11. So we use this logic to determine when we want to get a closing tr tag. Now notice that I put i plus 1 around parentheses. That's because I want to do the addition i plus 1 before I do the modular division divided by 4 or mod 4. So anyway, this is how we're going to determine when we need a closing tr tag along with our td tags. So, inside the curly braces, let's go ahead and add to the color picker again. So we're going to do the same thing. Color picker plus equals and two double quotes. And let's go ahead and put the semicolon in there. That way we don't, don't forget it. Now inside the double quotes, what we want to do is create a TD tag and a closing TD tag and then a closing tr tag. But this td tag, again, we give it a style equal to the background and then set a placeholder. So we need to close the tr tag, the td tag, and then we need to close the tr tag because this is going to end the row. Okay, so now let's replace this placeholder, let's break the strings up with two double quotes, and inside the double quotes, two plus signs, and inside the two plus signs, let's put our variable color. So now, we begin a row if i mod 4 equals 0, and we end the row if i plus 1 mod 4 equals 0. But if neither of these are true, then we want a middle row without any tr tags. So in this case we type else and we take the color picker plus equals and inside double quotes we don't want any tr tags. We just want the tr td tag with our style set our placeholder and then our closing td tag. Okay, so, so now we need to replace this color with two so double quotes and inside two plus signs we'll put our variable color. So after we manipulate the variable color picker, we need to get the ID with that element with an ID of color picker. Remember our table? We set its HTML to the variable color picker. So let's save and refresh and nothing's happening. So let's inspect the element. Let's go to the console. Ah, left hand side. Okay. Uh-huh, I should have done a strictly equal sign, and that's our error. So let's go back and fix that error. Okay, so right here I'm going to add an equal sign, and that should fix the error. So let's try it. And there it is. We have a four-column table with all our colors in the table cells. So let's go back. Let's inspect element first. Okay, so in our table with an ID of color picker, we have all these rows, and these rows have TD tags, or table cells, and each one of these table cells has a unique background color that corresponds with the hexadecimal numbers in our array. 
Okay, so back in the code, what I want to do right now is go up here and console.log the variable lane. That's the length of our array. And when we inspect element, we see the number 224. So there's 224 indices in the array. Okay, now, what would happen if we changed the 4 to a 5 there and there? We need to change them in both places. So we also want to make sure that the last cell in the table has a closing TR tag. Since the length of the array, 224, is equally divisible by 4, we will get a closing TR tag. But what if we wanted a 5 column table? Then at the last index, which is 223 plus 1 mod 5, would not be 0, and we would not get the closing TR tag at the end of the table. Now the browser will probably compensate for our error, but let's don't rely on the browser. Let's type two bar signs as or i equals length minus one. So this is going to produce a five column table. And that's exactly what we get. Now, what if, suppose we wanted to make an eight column table. Let's change the five to an eight here and here. And let's try that. And there's an eight column table. Right? Okay, so we can also make a 16 column table. Just change the eight to 16 in both places. And see if that works. And there's our 16 column color picker table. In the upcoming videos, we are going to use this color picker to dynamically change the style of some HTML elements, such as the text font color and text shadow color of the text. We are going to make this text in the next video. We could use a JavaScript color library, and later in this course we will. Also, we could have used a number and range inputs to create a different effect such as the RGBA effect. We will do that too, but I want to demonstrate a good example of the use of a for loop and modular division. The most important lesson in this video is the use of modular division to create a grid, in this case a grid that will function as a color picker. So thanks for watching, and in the next video we will create the text element that we will style with our color picker and other HTML elements.